This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on atmospheric temperature, looking at the temperature profile as we go through the different layers from the surface up to around 100 kilometers. And we're looking at how the temperature is going to change with altitude and see if the temperature fluctuates or increases, decreases based on different altitudes and discuss why this happens in certain layers and discuss the pauses and how they are distinguished to separate the layers in the first place. As a recap, we have to discuss what temperature is, how it's measured, and look back at the physics of air molecules to establish a nice fundamental knowledge of temperature in the atmosphere. So temperature is measured both in Kelvin, which is a more scientific measurement starting at absolute zero. We have centigrade, Celsius, which is the classic normal measurement throughout the whole world. And then we have Fahrenheit, which can be used, which is more predominant in North America, especially the US. And the essence of measuring temperature comes from the addition of thermal energy into an air parcel. The air molecules receive and absorb this energy and turn it into kinetic energy straight away. So the, the air molecules start to become more energized, more energetic, and they move more and they collide more. And those collisions obviously will increase air pressure. The collisions will release the energy inside the air molecules. And that energy is recorded as temperature. So the increased collisions will equal an increased temperature. If there's less collisions with less energy, then you're going to have a lower temperature, so not as hot. Now, this happens all through the atmosphere with different types of or different methods of heating and different methods of cooling. So here is the temperature profile for the atmosphere starting at the zero kilometers of the surface going up to 100 kilometers. Now, the y-axis, the vertical y-axis, is the altitude, and there are increments of five kilometers. And the bottom horizontal axis, the x-axis, is the temperature. And I've drawn also a second axis at the bottom for pressure, which we'll get to later on in a different video. But this is what the temperature is doing as you increase in altitude. So if we start at the bottom on the surface, the average temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, which is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is average because we know that certain areas of the planet, certain latitudes and certain uh, environments would get very hot and warm versus some areas are very, very cold. But the average is about 15 degrees Celsius. Now this would change dramatically if there was no atmosphere, it'll be down around minus 18 degrees Celsius without an atmosphere because the atmosphere gives us that nice natural balanced greenhouse effect where it was balanced until we started to uh, change it. But the greenhouse gases enable us to keep a nice temperate mild temperature throughout the whole planet as an average. So we start at 15 and you'll see that it decreases with increase in altitude. So it's a indirect proportion and as altitude increases, the temperature decreases. Then we get to about 12 to 15 or 12 to 20 kilometers, and you get this pause. The temperature stops decreasing. It stays around negative 56 degrees for the next few kilometers in altitude as you go higher. And then it starts to slowly increase and go back towards zero degrees Celsius, which is freezing water. So it's still cold, but it's increasing in temperature. So it goes up to around negative two degrees. So it increased from minus 56 back up to negative two. And this happens at around 50 kilometers in the atmosphere. Then it pauses again. It stops increasing. Again, has a small leveling off of temperature as the increase of altitude continues. And then it starts to decrease again up to 85 kilometers, about 50 miles. And here we get the coldest part of the temperature. It goes down to around negative 85 degrees Celsius, pretty chilly, at around 85 kilometers in the air. And again, there is a pause in moment where the temperature does not decrease any further. And it starts to increase around 90 kilometers and increases up through beyond 100 kilometers which the graph does not show. 
but it increases further theoretically, and we'll get to that later on. So the reason why we have these fluctuations and changes in the atmosphere is because of what is in each part of the atmosphere. Now, this diagram now has these three horizontal lines placed at certain altitudes where I've mentioned how the temperature is going to pause and change its behavior, change its characteristics. So, for example, the bottom layer, we start with 15 degrees Celsius and how it decreases with altitude. Now, there's a point where it pauses around 12 to 15 kilometers and there I put a horizontal line straight across. This horizontal line represents the tropopause, which is the boundary layer or the ceiling or the top of the first layer of the atmosphere we call the troposphere. Now these pause horizontal lines are there to divide the atmosphere into its corresponding layers. And there are four main layers, and if you want to include the exosphere, there's five. Now, the first one we discussed is the troposphere, and the tropopause is that horizontal line at an average of 12 to 15 kilometers in the air. Now, that does range with latitude being over the equator, it gets a lot higher between 20 and 25 kilometers, and over the north and south pole, it gets a bit lower between 8 to 12 kilometers in altitude. Then we have the second pause at around 50 kilometers, which is the stratopause, which is the boundary or ceiling or dividing point between the lower layer, the stratosphere, where the temperature is increasing, to the next layer above it, which is called the mesosphere. Meso means middle in Greek. So the middle sphere. And that is where the temperature is going to, again, decrease, just like in the troposphere. Then the third and final horizontal line above at 85 kilometers is called the mesopause. That, again, is the boundary between the mesosphere and the above, and the highest layer on this graph, which is called the thermosphere. Now, there is technically a thermopause, which separates the thermosphere to the exosphere, and that exosphere is going to extend out to around 3,000 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. But in this case, again, as discussed earlier, we concentrate on the lower levels of the atmosphere as where most of the air pressure, air molecules, climate, weather, wind, trade winds all occur. So these pauses are going to separate the atmosphere into its four distinct layers, the lowest layer being the troposphere, next stratosphere, middle one is the mesosphere, and the top one is the thermosphere, so increase in altitude. Now, why does the temperature decrease in the troposphere? Well, that is because the surface is the main source of heat and conduction happens where the atmosphere touches the surface, which is heated by radiation from the sun, and you get the transfer of heat into the atmosphere, the lower part of the troposphere, and you get hot air rising. So the hot air is going to rise, going to change in air pressure and buoyancy and density. And as it increases in volume, it's going to cool down. This is called adiabatic cooling. And this is why it gets colder the further away you go from the surface. So the higher you go, the colder it gets. Then in the stratosphere, we have the presence of or concentration of a large molecule called ozone, which is made of three oxygens, so O3. This ozone layer is formed by sunlight itself, by UV. Uh, breaking down the O2, which is the diatomic oxygen, which is what the uh, atmosphere is made of, 20.8%, uh, which is the oxygen, the rest is nitrogen, and then argon and trace gases. But you have the breakdown and formation of ozone, which then absorbs a lot of the UV radiation, especially UVA, UVB, and it's going to give off as an exogenic reaction the thermal energy into the environment, thus heating up that layer of the atmosphere. So the ozone is concentrated around 20 to 45 kilometers. So the stratosphere is going to heat up because of ozone. Then it gets to the stratopause and ozone starts to diminish in uh, concentration. And the mesosphere begins as the same as troposphere, where the further away you go from the stratosphere, the colder it gets. There's no real ozone up there. And the only real characteristic that's going to maybe maintain temperature is the occasional meteorite that flies through. But besides that, temperature drops quickly down to negative 86 because there's nothing else to heat it. There's no surface to heat it. There's no ozone. And we're not quite at the exterior where the radiation is going to impact the air molecule. Then we get to the, the uh, mesopause. 
at about 85 kilometers and then get into a increase in temperature in the thermosphere now thermo means heat sphere means region and why it's called that is because the individual air molecules and by the way the air pressure is so low that these air molecules are really spaced out and a few in number so when that individual air molecule does get heated directly by uv and x-ray radiation from the sun as that first real layer of of molecules being subjected or exposed directly to this radiation coming in from the sun that the air molecule gets superheated to temperatures around 500 degrees in the lower thermosphere to up to 2000 degrees in the upper thermosphere close to 300 kilometers above the ground so this individual air molecule gets superheated by the radiation it absorbs from the sun but however it cannot transfer the heat because it cannot collide as much with any nearby air molecule because the air pressure is so low that they're too far apart too spaced out they're, the collisions are very very few in number so the temperature really can't be felt in that layer so generally that layer is very cold however the individual air molecule itself could be extremely hot and that is the temperature profile how it changes with altitude the pauses the four main layers and the reason for why each layer has a certain characteristic of temperature and whether it increases or decreases with altitude this is the earth science classroom thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the content uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe thank you again